Alright, hey guys. This video has nothing to do with this snake, and I know this is the one I show off the most. It's just because he's the one that I like the best out of these three. The red phase. And he likes to flatten his head the most whenever I get a camera over top of him. Anyway, um, I'm thinking my next project, I might skip out on the Kenyans for a little bit. Um, I'm going to have to wait till spring to do this anyway. But I am thinking about setting up a feeder toad project. Um, I know a place in the spring where a ton of toads mate. So I could pick up one or two pairs of toads, no problem. You know, treat them for parasites easily enough. Um, raise roaches to feed them, which is really easy to do. I've raised roaches before. And with a pair or two of, um... Toads, you could easily produce a couple thousand toads. And um, I could probably figure out a way to raise the toads up in a rack system, even. Or some way. I'd probably. I gotta plan it out because I'm thinking about it too. I mean, I'm obviously I'm gonna wanna sell toads that have just become toads, you know, that are like the size of a dime for snakes this size. Um, and then larger toads, you know, for up to adults. Because there are some people out there, not many, but there are some people out there who like to keep their hog noses on a diet of toads. There's also people who have captive, uh, wild-caught hog noses, and they have to try to find toads. And I've looked. Feeder toads are not easy to find. So I think it could be with the... With hog noses becoming more and more popular... I think uh, feeder toads could be a fairly lucrative project, so could be cool. Um, you know, worst comes to worst too. I'm working with toads that you know are around here, so if it doesn't work out, I just put them back where I found them. <laughs> you know, where I found the. Uh, where the babies would have hatched. <laughs> but I gotta think about that too, because I don't know. I mean, I really don't think taking a, a pair of toads or two pairs of toads is really going to damage the immune, the, the immune, immune system, right? The ecosystem that much. But I also don't wanna, you know, I don't wanna mess things up for nature. So I could always just hunt down a uh, captive bred pair of toads if need be. You know, so I wouldn't be taking those babies away from the wild. But this this guy is very active. He just ate today. You can see the bulge. My uh, my friend didn't believe that he could eat pinky mice, so I had to prove him wrong. And I fed all three of them. I love that tongue, man. Look at that thing go. It's just so cool. What's up, buddy? It's just me. It's just me. Your cobra hooding up. Yeah, you know who I am. I feed you. I take you out, like, every day. <laughs> but, uh, I was also checking out my, um, my Het Snow girl, quote-unquote, who I think might end, might actually be a male. So, I mean, it's still useful as a Het Snow, but I was hoping she was a girl because it was a really sweet deal I got on her, and she was sold to me as a girl. These guys are tough to sex as babies, because you'll look at their tails, and you'll be like, okay, it's a short, stubby tail, and then they'll grow. And you're like, oh, crap, it's a male <laughs> with a short, stubby tail. So you think you've bought a female, and you'll end up with a male. But it does happen. Um, I'll let them grow out a little bit, or let it grow out a little bit more, and I'm getting some opinions. Um, honestly, I don't know what's going to happen, because... I'm thinking after next season, if all goes well enough, I might just skip over the whole het animal thing. And uh, if the season goes well enough, just pick up like a snow um, male or possibly... Um, I was thinking about picking up a pink pastel, actually. A pink pastel female. Because uh, I had some ideas of what I want to do. I don't know. We'll figure it out. I'll figure it out later, but... Ooh. 
He just doesn't like my phone. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to put him back so I don't stress him out too much. Because, I mean, they're, they're fun when they get cranky, but I don't want to stress him out. He just, like I said, he just ate. So, that's it for now. Um, I just wanted to, you know, tell you guys about that possible project. Get your opinions, you know. I mean, I've thought about getting into deferious feeders just to kind of pad the budget, you know. I know roaches are really easy to breed because I've done it before. And I thought, well, a lot of people do roaches. A lot of people do rodents. A lot of people do, you know, what do, what are there not a lot of? And it's uh, feeder amphibians. So, you know, maybe I'll do feeder amphibians and who knows, maybe even feeder anoles. Um, I'll probably start with the amphibians first, toads being the biggest one, because there's a lot of hog noses out there, and a lot of people are starting to, you know, want to feed them frozen toads. So, obviously I'd also have to figure out a humane way to put the toads down so that I could freeze them. Because, uh, I wouldn't feel right just throwing them in the freezer. It's not... It's not how I would do things. So I would think a CO2 chamber would do it, but I'd have to research what CO2 does to amphibians because I know it's probably different than mammals. So due to biology and all that. But all right, I'm done rambling. I'm gonna put him back out.